Acromegaly is a hormonal disorder that develops when the pituitary gland produces too much growth hormone due to a tumour in almost all cases. There are many signs and symptoms and your examination should include demonstrating some of the key features of acromegaly. Firstly, notice the general appearance of the patient and then examine the visual fields, as well as some of the other cranial nerves, especially nerves 3, 4 and 6. A pituitary tumour can press on the optic chiasm, resulting in a bitemporal hemianopia. Examination of the hands should also be performed, as well as assessing the muscle strength in the limbs, as proximal myopathy can occur. Features of acromegaly include a prominent supraorbital ridge, nose and lips, a pronounced jawline and macroglossia or large tongue. Enlarged hands with thickened skin also occur. Photographs may be brought in by the patient showing how their appearance have changed over the years. Examination may also reveal other endocrine features such as a goiter or gynecomastia. Growth hormone levels are usually very low in normal adults but can go up in response to stress. Growth hormone levels and blood glucose levels are connected and a glucose tolerance test can be diagnostic. In a normal individual, a high glucose level results in growth hormone levels being lowered. In acromegaly, however, the growth hormone level fails to suppress with glucose and may in fact show a paradoxical rise. Random growth hormone levels are unhelpful. However, an insulin-like growth hormone factor 1 or IGF-1, level reflects the mean growth hormone level and is useful in diagnosis. 25% of acromegalic patients also have associated diabetes and this also may be picked up on the glucose tolerance test. The pituitary tumour can compress the optic nerve and visual field defects are very common. High resolution CT scans are virtually always normal and the imaging modality of choice is an MR scan. Pituitary function is either partially or completely lost resulting in hypopituitarism. Treatment options available are transphenoidal surgery and subsequent radiotherapy if excision is incomplete or if the growth hormone levels are not normalised afterwards. Often radiotherapy is given afterwards as the tumour can frequently occur or radiotherapy can be given to patients alone if the patient is not suitable for surgical intervention. Somatostatin is a growth hormone inhibiting hormone and a somatostatin analogue such as octreotide can be administered subcutaneously. They reduce growth hormone levels by up to 90%. A growth hormone receptor antagonist, which can normalise IGF-1 level, levels, can also be used. It, however, does not reduce the growth hormone secretion or stop tumour growth. It is reserved for patients with ongoing disease, despite surgery, radiotherapy and other medical therapies.